Hey guys, uh, Jake here. Um, in this video, uh, we're going to be going over repairing a early 944 uh, like square top odometer cluster uh, that stopped working, whether the trip odometer like was hit while you were driving or um, it just stopped working over time. Uh, it's really just wear on the uh, little odometer gear. Um, this video that I just reviewed all the footage for, uh, we're going to go through that. I'm going to show all the relevant details um, throughout the whole process, uh, especially since there's parts in other people's videos online. I couldn't find a square top repair guide, uh, but out of all the other videos out there, it was a little bit different. Um, and also, uh, I'm going to link down below where I got my odometer gear. Um, and uh, also just want to mention um, with that gear that you're going to need, um, I'd recommend getting it from Pelican Parts or, uh, you know, another German website. I got mine from Odometer Gears, and specifically with that one, uh, the inner circumference where it pegs onto, which you'll find out in the video, um, to repair it or replace it, uh, was too small. Um, so we actually just slightly increased the diameter of ours, um, and it totally worked, but, you know, of course you want it to be plug and play and perfect, so um, that's why I'd recommend not getting it from uh, odometergears.com or, you know, whichever it is in the video. I'll clarify with the description, but... Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. The whole point is to just uh, keep more enthusiast cars on the road um, and save you some money. So let's get into it. Okay. So I got some lights. I'm going to go ahead and move them over there and we're going to get this all lit up correctly. So the first thing we're looking at, we've got plenty of light now, is the steering wheel. This is in the way. Um, if you have the OEM steering wheel, you kind of just need to pop off the plastic in the center. It'll come off. Since mine's an aftermarket, I'm gonna undo these Allen keys and then just pull it off like that. Cool. So that's all off. I'll show what the uh, stock one would look like right now. Just get a screwdriver in. I chose to do it right here because it seemed easiest. Just pry it up like this. Pop. Once you get that, <clears throat> that comes straight off and then this will be exposed and that's where you can put your 24 millimeter inside undo it take the wheel off for reference when putting this back on you just line it back up and then just push down and it pops each uh, side in so one two three each side will pop back in one two three and then you're good to go all right so the next step is there are two screws underneath one right here and one right here. Uh, most of these appear to be Phillips, minor Phillips. So all you need is a nice little Phillips and just come up underneath and we're gonna start undoing these. Easy as that. Okay. Um, right now we're looking at this plastic cover that is blocking this from coming out. Uh, I have a little baby Phillips um, that will definitely help. Go to your local hardware store and just get one of these little sets. So we have one right here underneath. Okay. And then inside on the other side, if we get the camera angled right. Um, you'll see a hole right here. So we have one more right here. You just undo the the left side one and the right side one. This is the bottom piece. This comes out really easily. Uh, this was the longer screw on the right side. And then on the left side, it had the little, little guy. Super easy, just need a little Phillips, no problem. My uh, hub extension is ultimately getting in the way, so it's coming off. All right, I got the hub off, so it's just ready to be pulled off. I'm gonna mark my splines real quick. I got a little chalk marker. I'm gonna go in there, mark them, um, so I know where to put it back on uh, later. And it helped uh, turning the wheel and then locking it first uh, so that it wasn't trying to like move, you know. So, gonna mark it and then we're pulling this thing off. 
just want to document this. This is really hard. I've just been very slowly working it up and out. And uh, I adjusted this to go up a little bit so we had some more room for this side. And I'm just trying to free it. Okay, so uh, that sounded bad, but we got it out. Nothing broke. It's just really tough plastic. Uh, that's gonna be a fucking nightmare to put back in. But that has to come out for this to go up and over. All right, so this is exactly why I wanted to film this, uh, because there are things that are different that I didn't even see in the video I watched. Uh, the person I was doing, the most similar thing was on a 924, and this is different. So, um, basically right here, you wanna undo these three uh, little uh, flathead bolts. Um, I know it's getting a little scary because we're starting to kind of dismantle a lot here. But as you can see, when you pull this out, it's hitting the top of this plastic. When you undo these three bolts, you can start to see how this can come out. Now, it's definitely connected to a bunch of wires. So, okay, so it does come out. That's great. Can we go a little bit more? No, not really. All right, let's see. Just a little bit more and we'll, we'll clear the whole thing, honestly. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is great, this is great. So then, wow, look at that. Okay, so the whole thing can just kind of be rested down here. Those wires will keep pulling out, so don't be afraid. Um, and then from here, we should be able to just now wedge this out. So it's touching the bottom, that's, that's really annoying. Okay. Wow, this is scary. This is scary. All right, so now we can see down in here. We're gonna keep pulling this really lightly and evenly um, because we do need to get into there. Um, this bigger cable down here that's plugged into this, that is the, um, you know, uh, it's the odometer uh, cable. Uh, so you need to undo that by hand. Probably got enough room now to go this way and then go down and undo it. So we need to undo that and then we can push this forward and it'll come out through the uh, middle bezel. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm gonna work on getting my hand in there and uh, kind of undoing the odometer cable. I'll let you know how I do it. I was actually able to undo the uh, odometer cable by hand. It was not that tight, which is great. Um, kind of just reminds me of like a cable, like coaxial cable. Uh, one of the other things that I'm noticing though is that these aren't really popping through, like coming forward. It might just be really stuck. The good news is once the, uh, the odometer cable is pulled, that's the only thing holding this really tight. So now you can really pull it out, get a good look. Um, and so I'm gonna undo uh, exactly what is holding, like what wires are connected to the middle, uh, the middle cluster. I'm gonna undo those real quick. Two to look at, first two to look at real quick. Uh, it's gonna be the two sockets. Those are just bulbs. They're gonna say, uh, they have their own little amp connector. Just pull them out gently and they'll come out real easily. You can even replace these bulbs. Uh, you can get little five watt uh, replacements. Um, and I actually ordered some. I need to check where they're at because they're somewhere in a baggie in the garage and I want to put them in so that I can have some uh, better lighting. Um, and then it looks like we got a little chipboard. So we're gonna undo that with the little Phillips and then undo this most likely brown ground wire. And then we should be good to go from there. All right, so this spot right here, uh, can we get some light? Um, so it'll say VDO on it. Hold on, sorry. So it says VDO on it, and it only goes in one way. If we take a look, I'm gonna hold the camera kind of a weird way. If we take a look at the backside, it has this little, uh, 
I don't know, kind of like a, it just looks like a Lego piece, honestly. But it goes in the hole, uh, into the odometer, um, in the back of the cluster. Uh, so it only goes on one way, and it only bolts on one way. So you can just safely take that off, move it over to the side, remove what I'm assuming is the brown ground, um, and then the two little light sockets, I uh, just kind of pull them back to the side, and now it is fully freed and should be good uh, to pull out at this point. So that is the next step. I'm gonna start figuring out how to get this out. Mine's pretty stuck in there and still, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hold this and do this at the same time, but on the left side, there we go, it's freed. I'm gonna pull that through, hold on. I'm trying to do this as easy as I can. All right, I got it. Look at that! <laughs> there it is. Little things moving around. All right, so for our odometer, I went to odometergears.com and I got this one. It's made in the US. Um, it would be hilarious if this wasn't the right tooth count, uh, but I double checked. Um, it's an M17, so this should fit uh, my 1984 or your pre-1985 944. Um, so this should be it. Where'd it go? Titan. So yeah, this should be the gear. All right, and then I also went with um, some LEDs from Super Bright LEDs. All right, and we're gonna pull these out and hopefully refresh our dimming bulbs uh, in the uh, dash cluster um, with these LEDs and it should light these up really nicely and bring some light back to them. I just went with a warm, uh, a warm low light. They shouldn't be too bright or blue or any other weird color. So really excited. Uh, I'm gonna open both of these and we also need to figure out how to open this. So when I ordered these, uh, it was kind of confusing with everyone saying different numbers for which bulbs to get. So here's what I ordered. I'll let you guys know which ones I ended up using. So the uh, the miniature wedge based ones are these ones right here. These are the miniature wedge based ones. Um, and then I'm assuming these ones are going to be the ones that fit you know, behind the video and stuff. So what I'm doing on the uh, video is I'm just lifting this up. It's kind of like this rubbery trim. I would assume it like keeps it socketed. Uh, you just kind of lift it up over this little clippy piece. Um, and I'm trying not to break. You can see where it's like glued right there, I would assume. Probably OEM. Uh, so I'm just trying to get it to slip over the back. And there we go. So this should be able to come off. It almost just is like a little belt. Um, and now I think this is the part where we start undoing the trim to open up the whole display. So uh, kind of not looking forward to this, <clears throat> but uh, uh, we gotta forge ahead. I mean, there's no other choice. So here we go. Time to start undoing the bezel around the edge. Alrighty, so um, my little part number piece right here uh, came off. So I just kind of went over it nicely with some uh, regular like clear scotch tape kind of stuff just to preserve it and keep it intact with the uh, video. Um, so what I'm gonna do is end up using uh, the exact same little flat hat I was using from earlier. And we're really just trying to get underneath this bezel and bend it up. And I'll kind of just get a better view. Yeah, so we're just doing this. Going all the way around. It already looks like it's starting to kind of move a little bit. It looks like this has been repaired before. There are certain spots where there's marks that were already there. Um, you can see some places where it might have been re-crimped. Um, overall, like, the bezel on mine underneath is kind of uh, a little more on the rough side, so... Oh, uh, you know what? Oh my god, I finally... Oh! I finally got it. Okay, okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go. That was kind of a nightmare. Um, wow. Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna pull that off and we don't wanna get any fingerprints on the inside. So I'm gonna just leave it straight face down like that. Um, here is the inside. We can kind of see this has got some little white marks all over it, but that gets covered by the edge of the bezel. So from here, I believe we can just undo these two uh, flat heads and then it should kind of like come apart. So this is actually pretty exciting. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Yeah, I can feel it like already starting to uh, disassemble, so to say. Okay, so now that that's like that, how does it come out? I'm a little... Oh, okay, so it just pushes straight out. So you don't have... So, look guys, right here, you do not have to take uh, the... So far, does not seem like you need to take that out. There we go. All right. So, let's take a look at our gear. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, it actually is this gear. And this is also why I think it's been replaced because it's not supposed to be red. Looks like whoever last had this one, put this one on here and you can see like they greased it. I'm not really sure why, but let's get this one off. It's like it's got a bunch of barbecue sauce all over it. Gross! All right, I just counted them both. They're both 17, so we're gonna throw the new one in. Uh, top to bottom doesn't matter, they're exactly the same. So we're just gonna slip this one over and we're gonna do no gear, no gear, no grease this time, like the previous uh, person that did this used. Wait, why isn't it going on? All right, we're finally here. We got the gear on. It is all lined up properly in the back. The rod's not pushing out. Just had to do a tiny, 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 tiny bit of trimming in the center. Um, and it is all good now. I just tested it. It's The uh, trip was starting to roll over into the eight. So we know it's working. So we're spinning this uh, bottom piece down here manually. So now we're good to go and uh, Good to start putting it back in its housing and casing. This is the moment I was waiting for, so time to reassemble. Puppies! Rita. Look at this. All right, before uh, we start reassembling this stuff, uh, really important. So after making sure that, you know, your uh, odometer's working, uh, you've cleaned all your stuff.
I just want to make sure that dust is on the inside. I mean, on the outside. Basically just fitting this back around the whole thing and then we'll be clamping it down and that's the uh, reassembly for the cluster. Okay, pro tip real quick is when I'm angling this, um, I'm putting the screwdriver not here but more on the edge and then curling down. And that's giving me the best result where I'm actually seeing all these parts crunch in versus trying to like go at it like against the cluster. That's not really helping. But starting kind of on the edge and then rolling it down into it where it's not gonna hit this is making all these creases. And so far I'm preserving the outer ring. I'm um, doing it like this. So I'm just going to keep doing it like that. It's already tight on there, but I just want to get all the way around so that it's, there's no loosey-goosiness anywhere else. All right. It is just about time to put the odometer cluster back inside but first uh, when we pull this out our LEDs are going to be exposed our bulbs so we're going to replace those with LEDs and then we'll have more light for our clusters which is uh, what we want I'm not going to be here again so might as well do them while we're here I'll just put this down here Sray is hanging out I'm, I'm chaperoning so all we're doing is we're taking uh, these replacement LEDs, um, 74 NWHP3 is the size, from super bright LEDs. And we're basically pulling these out. They just come straight out like this, super easy. Um, and then you just work it out. I'll kind of show you. So this is what it looks like with the regular uh, old bulbs in there. You just gotta work it out. You just be light and gentle on it, it'll come out. So we're taking these out, these super old bulbs. There's an LED on each part of the yellow pads. So here's the bottom. There's, there's no way to tell what the polarity is. So before you put all this back together, you're gonna wanna power on your dash lights and make sure that they're lighting up. If they're not lighting up, all you do is pull it out, flip it, and then put it back in and they'll light up just because there's no polarity, so you don't you don't know if you're putting it in the front ways or the back ways, or like you know forward or backwards. So you just line it up sideways. It should just slot in really easily, and there you go. And then you can just you know it's it's just like this. You just pull it out, and you can just slot it back in. It's that easy. Um, I figured why not lighten up the dash clusters um, when we're gonna have all this out. You know, because it's kind of a pain to pull this whole thing out. So, uh, order these with your odometer gear, and you can do this all at once. Or maybe you're, they're just dim, and you're just watching this video only to do this. You know, but that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show like the process of swapping out the LEDs. It's super easy. Okay. Did you see that? Yeah. So that one was working. Um, right. See, when it, when it touches metal, that, that activates it. Those little metal slots are right there. That's why you can only tell if it's on or not when it's in. But we can tell with this one, if we just tap it, this one needs to be reversed. So this one... Okay, so that one sounds working. Ah! This is probably dangerous too, so like, you know, danger warning here. Okay, so that one's working. 
All right, I'm doing this one-handed, so forgive me here, but when you're doing uh, the other big bulbs, so for this side, it is the B8.5D NWHP natural white bulbs. I went with white. You can go with a different color if you want. Um, basically, these little guys right here, when you slot them in, you'll be able to tell if it's the right slot, like uh, if it needs to be flipped or not, because when you turn it on, you'll see it glow. So if you see the glow, you know that it's working, and it it's hard to tell because it's light out, but you can already tell a difference from the bottom to the top where the LED is at. So we're doing really good. I'm gonna swap out the other ones. Seven of the chunky ones and four of the LED stick little ones. Now I'm going to reconnect the main uh, throttle cable onto here, the bottom, and then uh, start buttoning everything back up together. All right, guys, a uh, little pro tip here. To connect the um, odometer cable back to the main cluster, what I had, what I did was I had this slightly cracked so I could still fit my hand in around like this. And then I looked underneath like that to line it up, to line up the, the odometer cable or the uh, speedometer cable. And once I got it connected, I just pushed this as far as I could with my hand still in there and I just kept trying to thread it. Eventually I was able to thread it, readjust the cluster so it was straight, you know, shot head on, and then, uh, you know, tighten it to how I wanted it so it was tight, and then put it all back together. So now from here, we're gonna reinstall our two uh, Phillips screws, one here, one here, get those in, and then we're gonna start putting all this back together. And we're pretty much done from here. You can see we're like triggering the uh, thing. I guess just to see what it looks like. So. These are much brighter now. And if we turn on one click, so you can already see with the camera. Actually, this is something we can kind of cheat on. So if we turn this down, you can kind of see like what it would be like if it was dark. I guess that doesn't really help because then you could just go like this. But yeah, it's gonna make a big difference. I'm really excited and um, can't wait to see what it looks like at night. Time to put all this back together. For the uh, key trim and upper key trim, uh, just wedge it in from the top, be gentle, and it'll go underneath uh, the clusters. And now the next part I'm trying to get at is how do I solve the issue of like this stock that goes in? How do I get the wire out of the way so that I can push this further in? Because right now it's kind of resisting going in. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. Just make sure you do this stuff first, otherwise you'll forget and then realize you have to take it back apart to put those back on. Okie dokie. I realized I uh, had never recorded a final shot showing what it actually looked like after the work was done. Um, so let me show you guys real quick. So after you get your dash all put together, this is how it came out. So it's much brighter, much more clear. You can see a direct comparison to the old lights, to the new ones. Um, it's not overly bright when you're driving. You can see everything pretty nicely, pretty easily. You could even probably only do like one LED per thing, but obviously then it wouldn't really be even. But yeah, um, this is what you can expect for it to look like. Uh, this, I'm gonna say compared to how it looks on screen, um, it might be a little bit extra bright than what it actually looks like in real life, but it's definitely like, it lights it up. It for sure does. So if you want to go a little bit warmer to match more OEM, you totally can, uh, but not necessary. Anyways, um, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, it's been a journey. Ugh. And I hope this helped.
Hopefully, um, you now have a working odometer and your 944 is good to go for many more miles. Um, and that's it. If this helped in any way, uh, let me comment down below if you have any feedback. Um, all that stuff helps, especially going forward making you know any other content. Um, but as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe uh, for any extra car content or if you found anything interesting. Um, and that's pretty much it. See you guys in the next one.